up YouTube, Alex here with Mahogany Repeater, and today we're going to be talking about the Hytera HP682 digital radio, which we offer on our website. So what we're gonna do here today and what we're gonna do on this channel is objectively assess the capabilities and the limitations of the gear that we present to you. I think it's an important skill uh, in learning about radios and, and really in life in general to be able to objectively assess something for its capabilities and limitations and not to create an emotional attachment to any piece of gear um, or equipment. So we're gonna take an objective look at the radio gear today and going forward on this channel as we uh, you know, dive deeper into different types of radio equipment. So let's get started here. What we're gonna do first is take a look at some of the features of the radio. Uh, so this is a dual mode analog and digital radio. It operates on the DMR mode for digital communications. So what this means is that you can effectively talk to anybody on an analog radio and you can also talk to people using DMR digital mode. Now, this radio will not communicate with people who are on P25, which is a different digital mode. This radio is available in two models. There is the GPS and Bluetooth model and the uh, non-GPS and Bluetooth model. Uh, so the GPS and Bluetooth model, the GPS will have a receive only GPS, meaning it can pull its own grid coordinates from the GPS constellation. Um, and then you can send those as digital text messages to other radios. Uh, additionally, the Bluetooth capability allows you to use Bluetooth accessories like remote speaker mics or headphones. Um, and then the non-GPS Bluetooth model just does not have those features. Um, additionally, this is a single band radio, so it's available in either your choice of VHF or UHF, with the UHF range being 400 to 527 megahertz, and the VHF range 136 to 174 megahertz. Now, this radio can store 1,024 uh, 1, channels in up to 64 zones. And one nice feature about this radio is that the channel knob which also uh, offers dual functionality as the volume knob, um, is not indexed. So you can spin this knob as much as you like until you find the last channel in your zone. So you can really store you know, quite a few channels in a zone um, and you're not limited by a physical index on the channel knob. This radio includes a 2000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. Um, and that will get you 16 hours operating this radio on a 5590 duty cycle. That means 5% of the time you're transmitting, 5% of the time you're receiving, and 90% of the time you're in standby mode. That is with GPS and Bluetooth enabled. If you disable those, then you can get up to 20 hours of battery life out of this radio. In terms of its durability and water resistance rating, this radio is rated an IP68 water resistance, which means unlimited exposure to water. So if it were out in the rain, um, you know, splashed or dropped in a puddle, it's not going to affect the way that this radio operates. Um, in terms of its durability, it's been tested to military standard 810G. Um, so it is a pretty durable radio. In terms of software features, uh, this radio features a scrambler mode in analog to scramble voice. Um, and additionally, the base model comes with basic encryption ARC4 on the digital DMR modes, digi uh, digital channels. Um, there is an optional upgrade for these radios to enable true AES-256 encryption, um, which is much more secure than an analog scrambler or a uh, ARC4 encryption type on digital channels. Another great feature of this radio is the full keypad, which enables you to do front panel programming. And additionally, you can send text messages from this radio to other radios in your network when you're on a DMR mode. That's in contrast with this radio's little brother, which is the HP602. And this radio is what's known as a featureless radio. So it doesn't have you know, really a color screen or keypad or anything of the sort. There are a number of accessories available for these radios um, directly from Hytera. For example, covert uh, earpieces, two-wire surveillance earpieces, remote speaker mics, 
spare batteries, chargers, etc. Additionally, we offer some push to talk options like the Silinx Design U94 push to talk or the Disco 32, which will hook right up to your radio and enable you to integrate with military communications headsets. So in terms of size, how does this radio compare with some other common radios on the market? So let's take a look here. We have the Hytera HP682 and we have a Baofeng UV5R. So you can see that you know, with a long battery, the UV5R is a little bit taller, uh, but it's also a little bit more narrow than the HP682. With your short battery on there, of course, it's going to be um, a little bit shorter as well. Now, in terms of build quality, the Hytera HP682 outshines the UV5R all day, every day. Um, so this is a much more durable, much higher quality radio than the UV5R. So now let's take a look at the Hytera HP682 compared with a Motorola XTS5000. So we have the Hytera on the left here. Um, you can see that it's quite a bit smaller than the Motorola. It's both narrower and shorter than the Motorola in size. It's also a lot less heavy. The Hytera comes in at about only 10 ounces, so it's quite a light radio. Just to demonstrate the size of this radio, what I have here is just a pretty basic chest rig. Um, it's like a mini, mini chest rig. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is just show you, you know, how it fits into a standard mag pouch. So if I slide that radio down, it's barely exposed outside of the mag pouch. It's a good width and uh, depth really to fit the mag pouch very nicely. So you can use, you know, you can run standard mag pouches to fit this radio or, or radio wing or something of that nature and it will fit just fine. So here's a question for you. Why would you want to run a digital radio versus an analog radio? So in terms of range, a digital radio is not necessarily going to outperform a analog radio in terms of the physical distance that you can communicate with that radio. Five watts of power output on a radio is five watts of power output. But what it does is it enhances understandability over that range. So for example, if you're talking, communicating over five miles distance, at three to four miles where you might start to see some interference or some uh, static on an analog radio, the digital radio would still be crystal clear. It's basically always going to be crystal clear over the entire range that you can communicate until it is blocked by an obstruction and then can no longer communicate. Um, the other advantage of digital radio is that it enables you to use encryption. So if you're, you know, using, doing something of a sensitive nature that, you know, you need to have some privacy, then you're going to want to have some encryption capability on that radio. Um, now that is not something that is possible on an analog radio. Even the scrambler function is something that can be unscrambled instantly um, and is not true encryption. Additionally, digital radio gives you the flexibility to have some features like private calling, uh, group calling, and text messaging, which is not available in analog. But with a digital radio, the different digital modes have advantages and disadvantages therein. For example, with DMR, since it is what's known as a TDMA architecture, a time division multiple access architecture, it operates on two time slots, which increases capacity. So for example, on a single frequency with time slot one and time slot two, I could have two simultaneous conversations, one on each time slot. Um, this would not be possible on an analog net. All right, so we're out here at one of my favorite sites in 29 Palms for this range test. Um, we are at a good elevation and we have generally unobstructed line of sight between myself and the distant party. So I am here uh, basically in the center of town. The uh, distant end is out on base at a distance of approximately 9.5 miles, 15.3 kilometers away from us. So I'm just going to give you a quick uh, 
range test to show you the difference between the uh, digital channel and the analog channel. So really quick, we're gonna go ahead and give them a radio check. Radio check, one, two. Loud and clear. All right, and can you just count backwards from 10 to one so they can hear the uh, quality of the audio? 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, thank you very much. All right, so what, You're welcome. what we're gonna do now is go to an analog channel and show you what that looks like. Radio check one, two. Radio check. All right, so you can hear that we can still make contact equally on both the digital and the analog channel, but just to demonstrate the difference in, in terms of the quality and what you Radio hear. check. Yep, received. Can you go ahead and count back from 10 to one on this channel? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thank you very much. So you can see that really both the digital and the analog channels have quite good audio. Um, what you might have noticed on the analog channel is that there's a bit of static or white noise really behind the uh, voice audio for that uh, on that channel. Now, these HP682 radios do a really nice job. They have this active noise cancellation. So they do a really nice job of cleaning up that audio and presenting really, really high quality audio through the speaker. So that's kind of what you're gonna get with a radio like this. I mean, we tested it at 9.5 miles, um, you know, in the desert, which may not be where you're located at, but uh, in the desert, we have generally unobstructed line of sight. So it's good for making long distance uh, comm shots, but 9.5 miles digital and analog channel. So you can see that this radio performs very well. All right guys, so I hope that gave you a good look at the Hytera HP682 and some of its capabilities and limitations. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for joining us.